So very quickly, I don't have much time. So about myself, uh, my name's Lee Ford. I'm a uh, developer by trade. I like to uh, write community uh, samples as well. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, GitHub, you know, wherever. Um, and uh, yes, I like to do some DIY and exercise when I can. So um, the agenda, obviously we haven't got a particularly long uh, session here, but uh, we're going to answer in theory, two questions. So what is Azure Communication Services? Um, so I'll quickly go over what that is and, and then sort of how that works with inside of Teams and how we can kind of use the power of, of ACS uh, with inside of Teams. So um, very quick primer on Azure Communication Services. Um, so this is not my words, this is Microsoft's words, um, but ultimately it's a multi-channel communication API uh, for uh, voice, video, chat, uh, text, SMS, email blah 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 um, and here we've got just a very very uh, kind of uh, basic kind of outline of what ACS is and how it kind of hangs together it's kind of central to the solution and then you've got teams on one side and you've got the client application on the other and we'll get into this in a bit more detail um, in a minute so if we just break it down a little bit um, it's effectively an offering like Microsoft Teams. People might say, oh, it's a white label Teams and it works like Teams. It has the same fun features and functionality. Uh, and, and some of that is actually true, um, but it's um, using the same underlying technology as Teams. So something called IC3. Um, and effectively, that is a, a platform that uh, both uh, Teams and ACS uh, rely on. So uh, for things like uh, uh, traffic traversal or translations, uh, setting up of meetings, all that sort of stuff. Um, a lot of that is done on IC3. Um, so it's not a product as such, uh, like Teams. You can't just buy ACS and, and buy a license and away you go. It's a service that you add into your existing uh, application that you uh, that you have, um, or an application that you're going to build using ACS. Um, so you can only put ACS in Azure, you, but your code can run anywhere. So so the ACS bit sits in Azure in your tenancy. Um, and then you run your code against that ACS. Um, so similar to something like, say, um, a bot framework within uh, within Azure. It's, the bot always has to be in Azure, the, the registration, but ultimately your code can be anywhere uh, outside of that. So um, what can you do with ACS? Um, so um, you can um, effectively use multiple modalities uh, in your application. So again, it's not something that you just buy as a service. You have your own application. Um, so we've got things like meetings, PST and calling, SMS, email. I think there are a few others. Uh, some of them are, are in preview, but ultimately these are the kind of core functionality. And like I say, some of these do translate over to Teams as well. So um, a quick touch on what IC3 is. So it's the Intelligent Shattered Communications Cloud. Very catchy name. Um, and like I say, it's an underlying platform that Teams and ACS both share. So if we kind of just quickly map out how this looks, we've got IC3 at the bottom, we've got Teams on the left using IC3 uh, underneath and then ACS sits in front of AC, uh, IC3 and then your app sits uh, uh, sort of on top of ACS um, and effectively what we're going to talk about today is kind of integrating Teams and your app through IC3 um, essentially. Um, so what does this have to do with Teams? Um, so there are um, some native or direct interop uh, scenarios that uh, ACS works with Teams, uh, and these are voice and video. So this might be in meetings or one-to-one -one calls, um, obviously chat um, inside a meeting or something, um, and then um, screen sharing. So you know, if you're in a meeting, you can share your screen uh, with an ACS user, or an ACS user could share their screen with a uh, with Teams users. So um, we've got a very quick scenario here where we've got, say, a Teams meeting. Um, and there's kind of four different um, scenarios that you might be able to kind of take part in this meeting. Um, and if we just sort of cut it in half, um, the, the, the top is what you already have today. So a Teams user can join the Teams meeting using desktop mobile browser uh, or an anonymous user. So then they don't have a, a Microsoft account or they're not signed in with that account. Uh, they can still join a Teams meeting. They can put in their name as whatever and still have that experience. It's, it's effectively the, uh, the, the, the same uh, experience though. Um, and then below is what you can add with ACS. So in a, in a Teams perspective, um, uh, everything stays the same, but from an ACS user perspective, um, you can join uh, either using a Teams user, so you could create your own ACS application, and but still use your Teams identity to authenticate and, and use the uh, use the um, use whatever application you're building, um, or you can do a B, uh, BYO 
I user, uh, which effectively handles you can do whatever authentication methods um, to uh, to allow or any any authentication methods. Maybe you don't have any. Uh, it's up to you if, you if you're brave enough. Um, but ultimately, um, it's just another way of kind of linking into that Teams meeting. So rather than just having two entry points, we've got four. Um, so here's an, an example interrupt. So let's say with a Teams meeting again, because I think it's the, probably the easiest scenario to go through. Um, effectively, we have uh, the app client, you know, the app client side of the app that you've built that quests uh, a, a token, similar to like an access token, which effectively grants you access to use ACS. Um, and then you can then, uh, using that token, request um, some uh, sort of uh, access to ACS. Um, so in this scenario, you'd request the token from ACS. Then you'd get the, the team's meeting details that you're going to join. Um, and then you can effectively um, join that team's meeting using your uh, ACS credentials, uh, using the ACS uh, client rather than the team's client. Um, so we'll quickly get into today's demo. Um, um, so what we're going to try and solve here is a problem. So uh, you're an organization who uses Teams, but you're required to speak to your consumers or customers who may or may not use Teams and you can't be sure that they, they do. Um, so you want to be able to do this without having them to create an account or download Teams or kind of just as long as they've got a web browser on a device, um, you know, mobile or, or, or desktop, it doesn't matter. They can effectively join the uh, join the meeting. So um, what it, we're, we're going to try and do here is create a seamless way for a Teams to host a remote support session. So the, the kind of uh, the kind of uh, idea here is that, oh, I need to help this person. They don't have a Teams account or, or you know, they don't have Teams, I could just give them a code to join um, and they will be able to join from the browser. Um, and if we quickly look at the kind of the, the uh, solution for the demo today, we've got a static web app running in the middle. Um, that's handling the communication with ACS. Um, it's also got a date. We've got a database connection that for storing the Teams meeting details, which we're creating through Microsoft Graph. Um, and then right at the bottom is uh, where the external users, so the external user web browsers to the client side of the static web app, um, and then obviously calls any backend APIs uh, that are part of the static web app as well. Okay, so demo time. So let's cross our fingers and hopefully the demo uh, behaves. Um, so I will just bring up Teams. So um, like I say, we'll, we'll try and explain kind of the scenario here. So the idea is that I've spoke to the one and they were saying, oh, uh, you know, maybe I'm on the phone to them now and I'm saying, oh yeah, look, I, I can't really see what your problem is. Can I, can I, can you share your screen or can we have a call or something about it? Um, and you'd click, um, so we're using a messaging extension in this scenario, I probably shouldn't have told you that, but um, to generate a, uh, a, a request. And obviously there's different ways you could do it. You could do it with a bot, um, but ultimately in this case, uh, I'm gonna use uh, a messaging extension. So I can put PMP demo, to this, you know, this is the name of the uh, session, um, and then I'll put help. Okay, and if we cross our fingers, hopefully we get a um, a session created for us, which we have, thankfully. Um, and this uh, generates a meeting ID. Now, this meeting ID is the Teams meeting ID that um, you can already join by uh, ID and things like that. So, um, effectively, what's happening in the background is we've created a meeting using Microsoft Graph. Uh, we've got that uh, meeting ID generated. Um, that's stored in Cosmos, and I'll get into that in a little bit, uh, what, why we need that. Um, but ultimately, what I can do now is I can go to a browser. Um, in this case, I've just got it open here. Um, so I'm not using Teams. I can put in the code. Uh, it's found the meeting, and hopefully it's going to work. It's going to let me um, join. So I'm just going to uh, start the call. So. I'm joining the call now, so I'm waiting to be admitted. I'm I'm not actually in the um, uh, you know, in, in the meeting yet. I'm kind of in the lobby. Um, and now, if I go back to Teams, I can then click join from here and join that same meeting. So I'm not going to join with any audio. Oh, there's me. Okay, uh, but I am going to join with um, the video. Um, and, and as you can see now, I'm in the call. Um, and if I go back to here. I'm still waiting to be admitted. If I go to people, I can admit that person. And now I can see uh, both of us uh, in the call. And obviously, if I go back to here, you can see me from the uh, from the flipped angle. Um, and that is effectively the, um, the the session in a nutshell. So you can share your screen and 
Uh, if we wanted to add the chat to the meeting, we could add that in. I haven't done that uh, in this scenario, but ultimately that's how we can quickly spin up a uh, uh, spin up a, uh, a Teams meeting. Um, so quickly go over some of the how it all works. Um, so we have a uh, an actual communication service instance. You don't really have to do too much with that other than um, just create one, have one created um, and get the um, there's a connection string that you put into your code that allows you to generate tokens for uh, ACS users. Um, and then we have a, a bot. Now the bot is used for the messaging extension to be able to uh, call the, uh, the the sort of um, the the graph API to generate the the meeting request. Um, and then finally we have the Cosmos database. Uh, and all we're storing in the Cosmos database is the meeting details. And the reason we need that is that we can't join a Teams meeting. Um, using just the ID using ACS, we have to have the full uh, join URL. Um, so what we do is we allow them to enter the ID. We do a lookup in Cosmos to say, okay, we've got a meeting with this ID. Um, and then we uh, we then provide the uh, the web URL uh, for the ACS uh, code to uh, to join. Uh, if I quickly bring up the, the code, um, if we just go through the, the kind of the app split into two, really, from a from a back end point of view, we have the um, kind of the, the requesting of a meeting, and then we have the back end APIs for the um, for the um, for the external user to be able to pull through the uh, you know, by entering an ID and pulling through the meeting details. So uh, in in the in the, in the kind of the bot perspective or the messaging extension, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we uh, handle a HTTP request. Um, uh, this is a, a, obviously this is a static web app, so this is an Azure function. Um, and effectively, we then send this to the bot. And then inside of the bot, we effectively handle the submit action. Um, and what we're doing is we're capturing some of the information. Uh, we're creating a graph client, um, creating a Cosmos client, and then we're creating an online meeting um, using this start time and end time that's been generated from uh, today. Um, and then we're effectively storing the, that meeting in uh, Cosmos database. Um, and then what we're doing is we're creating an adaptive card and returning that to the end user with the with the join button. And that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. Um, it's a pretty straightforward thing. Also, we've got an error here. If there's an error, we can uh, we can return that too. Um, and then from a uh, sort of the the web client uh, backend sort of thing. We have a very basic function here about um, literally creating a, uh, a token and a user for the uh, for the client to be able to join the, uh, the, the Teams meeting um, in ACS. Uh, and it's a very, very straightforward thing. Um, effectively, we get the request through from uh, uh, HTTP request. We effectively create a client using the connection string for ACS, we create a user and we get a token and we choose what type of uh, modality we want that token to be um, uh, for what scopes we're going to use um, and, and we return it back to the client. Um, and then finally, when someone enters a, an ID in the client side code, obviously we have to then go and pull through that team's meeting, check if it is even a meeting. So we'll just enter some random numbers. We want to check if that numbers actually attribute to a meeting. So uh, what we do here is we do a look, uh, look do a lookup. Uh, we check the database. Uh, if there's a team's meeting with the join ID, um, if not, we return a 404, and if we have one, then we return the uh, the web URL and the meeting ID back to the uh, back to the client side code. Um, and I think that's about it, really. Um, I can potentially, if I've got time, quickly show you the client side code, but um, I feel like we might be uh, running out of time. But let's quickly have a look um, from a app point of view. It's a very straightforward process. Um, we just have a um, we create a uh, an ACS um, uh, connector. Um, we effectively pass in through the um, token, um, and then once we've got the the, the ID and the token um, and a web URL, we can then join the the meeting. Um, and then we've got effectively in here, we've got uh, some effects to effectively validate the um, the ID is uh, correct um, and also join uh, the meeting. So. Um, yeah, I, I won't go through every line by line because we might be here a while, but ultimately there, there is this is all obviously um, public. You can kind of peruse at your own uh, leisure, but ultimately that is the uh, the client side code. Um, and then finally, I think. There might be one more slide after that, so 
um, yeah, so that's it really for me. Um, it is on the PMP samples, um, uh, Teams Dev samples um, already, so you can go to that link and uh, download it, try it for yourself. It is a static web app. And you can, uh, I've, I've been running it locally using the um, static web app CLI, so you don't have to um, you know, set it all up in Azure if you don't want to. There's a kind of a step by step for getting up and running uh, on your on your local machine. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.